so I asked my wife to blow with me, to leave, with a, uh, leave without approval, which meant we would be declared suppressives. And I said, I have to go. And she says, no. So at that point in time, I didn't know what to do. It's either my sanity, you know, I, it was a dark, dark, dark place for me at that point in time. What did you do? Well, believe it or not, in the public relations department, um, I got to meet a lot of public. And there was a gentleman out there named Don Maines. And he was the most godsend thing. I was, I called my mother. When I, um, when I left and I asked for money, I called her up on the telephone and all I had was my wallet and my car. And I asked her, I said, Mom, could you send me money? I want to come home. And my mom said, no, Gary, you made your bed, you sleep in it. And that was because I was forced to disconnect from my mother and she loved me. So she tried to get in touch with me all the time. And of course, I you know, talked to her on the phone with the ethics officers to make sure she's not, uh, you know, when she tried to reach me. But she knew I was blowing her off and disconnecting. So um, she was very hurt by my disconnection to her. So that's what she did. She said it, you know, out of um, painful yeah, I understand things. that. She was in pain. So then um, I had nothing. I had nothing. I wanted to call the Clearwater Police Department and say, listen, I have nowhere to go. I have no family. I don't have nowhere. But you know what? I had a dime in my pocket. And I called Don Maines up. And he was the public relations for Clearwater. And he, he basically went on to work with George Bush. But anyway, um, I called him and I said, Don, I need a place. Um, can I crash out at your place? He, um, there's, he's a great man. And, and, and he was in PR that was in um, Clearwater. So he gave me a place to stay. And I had nothing. And he gave me money to get going. And then he also, um, I went to, got a, to get a job. I, looked, I mean, what could I do? I looked in the newspaper and, you know, how to make a lot of money selling vacuum cleaners. So I sold vacuum cleaners door to door while I could stay at Dawn's place to get some kind of money together. But I, it was dark. It was a dark period. And was Don a public Scientologist? No, he had nothing to do with Scientology whatsoever. Matter of fact, um, he was the um, in charge of the Dizzy Gillespie Festival at Clearwater, and he would interview. Uh, he would come to the church, and he was very. He was a influential person, public figure, and him and I met at a malt shop, and we talked about Scientology, and uh, we talked about different things and theology, and we just became friends, which. I never thought I'd have to use that kind of a friendship, but uh, if it wasn't for him, I don't know if I would have made it through that night. Yeah, I don't know if people appreciate one reason the CR doesn't pay anything but slave wages, maybe a few dollars a week. They don't want you to leave. You're broke. You have no resume. You, you can't leave. So and, you sold vacuum cleaners. What about the wife you left behind in the RPF? She came to me, and then she said, Gary, could you come back to the church and we could be a family again, kind of thing. And um, I said, I can't do it. And then, so what happened was, she got kicked out of the um, Sea Org because of the bean theory. Uh, we, she's not producing enough. She's got babies. Out you go. So out exchange. Yeah, out exchange. And I saw that so rampant in the Sea Org, but people got sick. Um, long-time Scientologists that knew L. Ron Hubbard, I remember those people were getting, they would get um, cancer or they would get some kind of disease or they'd have something wrong with them. And the first thing they do is they get fitness boarded out to get handled. It says, you've got uh, medical issues, you've got to leave. And get it handled and then come back after you're done. Well, they leave with nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, and then when you're in the church, you don't pay Social Security or anything like that. So you don't get Social Security either. So when you leave, I'm telling you, it's very difficult to leave because you really, 
Could you, could you describe the bean theory for people who've never been in the church of Scientology? The bean theory is you have to produce enough to, to validate you being a, a worker. So if you are not producing the right amount of products and consider fair exchange, then you're worthless to the organization. So you have to pay for yourself plus. And if you're not producing, then you're out. You're right. Even if you're old enough cancer, and I saw that personally, firsthand. I would go to the FSO's um, meetings, and uh, they would sit, go through the FP, the financial planning, and they said, well, this one's got uh, um, something, or this one's got something. And I remember this one guy, he was the guy that built the ship that sits in the flag land base of the, uh, the big ship. And uh, he put that all together, and he had something wrong with his feet or something like that, and they fit and sport it. And he was around for the beginning of time, and I got to know him. And he was like crying. He goes, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then, he, he would, because of the bean theory. So they would go on to like uh, use uh, taxpayer-funded medical care. That is, show up at an emergency room, ask for help, right? Get welfare. So the church, the church's cast offs go onto the public benefits somehow. Yes, right. Because remember, Hubbard had the key to every medical illness, every illness could be taken care of by auditing. So if the auditing didn't work or something like that, it's almost like, um, you, you need to go get some auditing. So you get kicked out, that was a strange part, you get kicked out so you can pay for your services so you can get well again to come back in. That was the game.